According to Zoltner and Sinha, uh, Salesforce design consists of the following elements. We'll go through these to see um, what, what they're suggesting. The first step is the sales strategy, and step one. Now here, customer segmentation. Well, <coughs> looking at customer segments with similar sales processes, these have to be defined. So here, looking at customer segmentation, th that's an important issue in sales, trying to group customers together on some basis. It could be on lifestyle, it could be on work patterns, it could be on um, the, 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 not just the lifestyle, but where they live and uh, what the community is doing and what are their uh, what are their aspirations? How how to tap into that community and find out the way it's moving and what it considers important. And look at the age profile of the population. Look at the gender mix and who's working and who's not working. Look at the, the various bases for segmentation and understand the, uh, the likely customer base. Look at customer offering. Well, the product and service offerings for each customer segment. Um, not all products will suit all people. Some products will be aimed at some segments, other products aimed at other segments. So some will have trimmed down facilities and be aimed at one segment who are not really that interested in the product but may purchase it just if it's cheap and uh, if it's functional and it's perceived as good quality and good value for money. But other parts, other segments may want a more elaborate product with much more functionality and much more facility built in. Um, they're more aware of what they want. So looking at segments and looking at matching the products with the segments, that's important. And the sales process, well, activities for the desired customer offerings uh, to each cu customer segment are specified. So that's the sales process. It's marrying up the offerings on the one side with the segmentation on the other. It's bringing the two together. It's knowing the various segments and knowing the various products that are available and matching the products with the segments. That's the job of the sales team. Then we go to step two, the go-to-market strategy. Well, sales and marketing channels. Well, channels including the sales force for each customer segment are specified. So looking at the marketing channels, how, how should the marketing channels be arranged? And what are the marketing channels? Well, face-to-face. Uh, where a, a sales representative speaks directly to the customer, that's a channel. Um, it could be, uh, a marketing channel could be the dissemination of information electronically through websites, emails. Um, it could be television uh, information. It could be radio. It could be posters. It could be even the sponsorship of local community events such as a sports day. Um, so this is the contact with the community. And once the organization has made the contact with the community and with the various segments that it wants to address, then there is a linkage between the two sides. Step three is the Salesforce design. Well, the Salesforce structure, uh, the degree of and nature of specialization, roles, reporting, relationship, control and coordination mechanisms. So what is the, the Salesforce structure? It may be that it's multi-structured. It could be that there are very generalists, generalist sales staff, who are pleasant, affable, approachable people, but who, whose job it is just to make the initial contacts and then pass on that lead to a more specialist salesperson. It may be the, the sales team will have these more general people just to make contact, just to find out, just to have a presence in the market. 
to represent the business, to watch, to understand who's doing what, and and then make contact with that person and arrange uh, a more detailed meeting with one of his or her colleagues who will take over the lead and make it into uh, into a customer and make it into a sale. The size of the sales force, well how many sales people and how will the sales effort of each type of salesperson be allocated to customers and products? It's always uh, an issue how many sales personnel are required within a business. Um, the sales team will of course say they're always short short staffed but um, but realistically how many are required? Uh, in other words we're, typing, we're talking here about a type of productivity. How, how productive are the sales team and if there were more of them would it be worthwhile? Or perhaps they're already overmanned. There's too many of them at the moment. So there's a tension there and the, and the management, the senior management team must look critically at the, the size of the department uh, in consultation with the head of marketing and making sure that the assets that they've got, the human assets they've got, are effectively deployed uh, in the marketplace. That they recognize the segments, they're able to address the needs of the segments, they have the information and the communication skills to do so, and there's enough of them there to do it and to make the sales that are necessary for the organization to sustain itself. So there's an alignment of responsibilities. Uh, who will cover which customer and with what products and activities? And how will the sales force be deployed geographically? So it's, it's a question of behind the scenes. Uh, away from the eyes of the, the customer or the, the possible customer, the potential customer, away from those eyes, the sales team must organize who's going to see the customer, who's going to deal with that segment, who's going to deal with the products that are related to that segment, and how will it be done. And it should be done smoothly and efficiently. And as far as the customer is concerned, or the potential customer is concerned, uh, this has been well planned, well thought out, an efficient organization, one which can be trusted, and therefore, of course, that supports the belief that they should buy the product. Because the sales team themselves have been so efficient. Now the sales force design, well, the sales force structure, well, the focus is to allocate roles and activities amongst the sales team to make sure that the skills and competencies within the, skill, uh, the sales team are matched with the requirements of the sales team. In other words, that there is a, a correspondence between skills and uh, sales, that, that the two are connected, and that the right people are used in the right context. So if a segment is mainly uh, young, um, college-based um, customers or potential customers, the sales team should be, generally speaking, quite young and quite active and knowledgeable about what's going on uh, in that segment of the community. So they're able to speak competently to those individuals, to those customers or potential customers, and to make sales in that way. The purpose of the sales force structure uh, is to carry out and control activities which enable the organization to achieve goals, growth and customer needs. So the whole idea is that the sales team should be able to make the sales, the organization should grow and um, the, the customers benefit because they're, they're getting support and knowledge about the product they're being dealt with efficiently and professionally. So it's everyone's a winner if it works as smoothly as anticipated. 
An organization structure provides an overall picture of the sales team, their activities, roles, reporting and relationships. So having a, a good organizational structure within the, the marketing department I should say, having a good organizational structure enables members of the sales team to see who is responsible for what, who's working on what, which products are being handled by whom, uh, where the, the market is, what are the segments, uh, how is it possible to access um, and contact the segments, uh, who's within the segment, what are the attributes of the segment in terms of disposable income, uh, purchasing power. Um, so it's information but it should be organized and accessible, easily accessible to the sales team so that they're able to allocate themselves as well as being allocated by the manager but they're able to allocate themselves and suggest where their skills and competencies can best be used. They're helping the manager to make more rational decisions about the allocation of the sales team. The size of the sales force, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a bit more contentious because <coughs> the sales team of course will say they always need more and so will the sales manager, the departmental manager. But it depends on, the sales force structure depends on the size of the sales force. Um, it may be possible to have the division of labour within the marketing department where some members of the sales team are specialists in certain products or are knowledgeable about certain geographic areas or certain segments. They have specialist knowledge of those and that enables them to have division of labour. But of course that depends on the size of the sales. If it's a small company making very few sales, then they're not able to employ the specialists. They're not able to employ a large sales force who will have the capability of breaking down the task into smaller functions and becoming specialists within those functions and those knowledge areas. The sales force size plays um, a key role for an organization such as turnover, expenses, costs and profits. So it's it's important that the, the sales force is monitored for its productivity and for its effectiveness. And it's important that it's not simply allowed to grow because someone felt it was a good idea. It should be grown if required and if there is a good case made. And it should be monitored carefully to ensure that it has been effective. The following factors need to be addressed. How many salespeople are needed exactly? That's a, a really difficult question. Um, many organizations don't really know the answer to that. They, they try to guess it. But they may overexpand or they may not have enough. It depends. If they don't have enough, they are losing sales. If they have too many, it's an excessive expense. It's Getting it right is the tricky part. It's not just getting the right people, but they must have the right skills. And they must be focused in on the product. They must have, ideally, some interest in the product. But they must also know the various segments that they're addressing, or, or where, they, where the customers reside, where they operate the attributes of the customers, the, the demographics that are associated. And they must be ideally have some knowledge of the customer base. And to that end, are they specialists or are they generalists? Are the specialists who can sell one particular product to one particular segment? That would be highly specialized. Or are the generalists? They can sell everything the company makes and they can sell it in the wider community. How many managers are needed to oversee all the sales activities? It's not just having the, the sales team on the ground, it's who's organizing them and how many managers are required and what's the function and role of the managers and how do they go about disseminating information and controlling the team? How are they monitored and how are they assessed? The alignment of responsibility, well, 
the sales team must have sales targets uh, to work towards. They must be allocated uh, with some responsibility, account management or selling activity. The, the salesperson can't be given carte blanche to simply go out and do his or her best. They should be given targets. So as they will try to, to meet the targets, they'll try to, uh, they'll be motivated to meet the targets. And perhaps part of their remuneration will be based on bonuses associated with meeting the targets. The sales team can be allocated selling targets uh, based on postcode, geographic co uh, coverage, um, target customer groups. So it depends on how the sales team are organized. They, they could be uh, organized, as I said, by geographic coverage. Uh, certain members of the team assigned to a particular city or a particular region or a particular country and they try to uh, get sales within that area. But there must be some rational basis for the allocation of the sales team. Specialized accounts need to be managed more carefully. Uh, perhaps specialist software for a particular industry. Um, sometimes within very specialist markets, perhaps within engineering, where products are very expensive and also um, uh, a great deal of uh, attention is paid to tolerances and to communications with the buyer. Um, very specialist, specialized accounts need to be kept. Um, sometimes engineering companies are in a supply chain and supply chain have very rigorous requirements of each level and these must be monitored and checked and ensured that the tolerances and the specifications are precisely as was required. Otherwise when it gets to the end they simply will not fit together. The product will not work. So those are some ideas about the Salesforce design, some issues associated with it. It's a, probably a good idea to go back over the video a few times, make your own notes and um, make sure that you are familiar with some of the factors that relate to the Salesforce design. Uh, that's the reference that I mentioned a couple of times throughout and that also concludes the video. So let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.